It's April 14, 1931, and another remarkable event is about to be uncovered by Aria, Rebecca, and Ali, the Retrospectors. By 1931, there were 2.3 million cars on Britain's roads, and sadly, 7,000 deaths a year. Today, by comparison, there are 27 million vehicles on the road, but less than half the number of fatalities. So why is that exactly? Well, it is in part thanks to a book that came out on this day in 1931 that went on to become a massive national bestseller, The Highway Code. To give a picture of the Wild West vibe that was in vogue at the time, the year before, the Road Traffic Act had abolished all speed limits in the country, not because they weren't needed, but on the grounds that they were so widely ignored that they were actually bringing the concept of the justice system into disrepute. (laughs) Yeah, so this was a situation where there was no driving test. If you could afford a car, you got in it. Everyone was drink driving. And also there were no indicators on cars. In general, you were relying on hand signals. So a surprising amount of this initial highway code is taken up with what you do with your hands to signal people your intentions. And it hadn't occurred to me because I guess hand signals have sort of gone away now unless you're riding a bike just how confusing they must have been. Yeah. I, I found a Pathé instructional video which said, don't flick your cigarette ash outside, it's very misleading. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only reason not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you were driving along flicking cigarette ash out the car, someone might think you're about to turn right. Yeah, yeah and do you know what? Like, I knew that people used to use hand signals to indicate turning. So to mm. indicate a left turn, you extended the arm and waved it up and down. That's another thing I didn't, I've forgotten, is that obviously you can only use one arm to do this. You can't use your left arm because you'd have to stretch across your whole car so you would wave your arm for a left turn and for a right turn you'd extend your arm and then hold it in place there are also whip versions suggested for drivers of horse-drawn vehicles but what i didn't realize is that you obviously didn't have brake lights either Mm. so you had to use and you used the same signal as the left turn to show that you're slowing down yeah so there was quite a lot of arm action it was very choreographed driving in the early days I found the debate on Hansard in the House of Lords where they were talking about the introduction of the Highway Code in 1931. And one of the Lords stands up and says, you know, the most valuable contribution that this book is going to make is it will make explicit that hand signals are there so that you can signal to other drivers what you intend to do. Mm. Because it is the case, my lads, that at the moment, clearly those of us with more experienced driving use our hand signals to gesture to other drivers what they should do. Mm. There's obviously this thing of like, well, I know how to drive, so I'm going to direct all the traffic from my car. You come through now, and then you go here, and then now it's my turn. And there's sort of mad gesticulations going on whilst people are driving. It's like, no. With everyone acting as traffic You cop. say what you're doing, yeah. and then leave me alone. <laughs> Arm signals only stopped being on the driving test in 1975. Wow. I mean, obviously by this point, cars had indicators on the whole, but you were still expected to be able to demonstrate your arm signals until the 70s. One of the other fascinating things about the book is how current a lot of the advice still is. You know, there's a section on motor horns and it says, remember that your horn is intended to be used as a warning and an indication if needed of your presence on the road. It should not be used as a threat. I thought that's still still valuable advice that people should be heeding. Yes, but it does advise you to sound your horn when overtaking another vehicle. Well, there's definitely... That one got me. I enjoyed that one. I was like, yes, that's not going to alarm people and cause accidents at all. But it's, it's funny, yeah, I mean, like you say, bad manners have obviously been endemic from the dawn of motoring. Right. There's also a passage that cautions people against the temptation to block people overtaking them by speeding up, yeah. which I'm like, I can't believe people were doing that. We have, I feel like there's such a quaint picture of the early days of motoring, you know, people bumbling around in quaint little cars. Going, oh no, after you. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Whereas they were doing the exact same thing that we're all doing on the roads now, just much slower. There's a bit that's advice to motorcyclists that says sudden noisy acceleration is unnecessary and disturbing. It's not, it's not even a, a sort of it's, guideline. It's just, it's saying, just a statement. It's just saying, that's really annoying. No, but that's interesting, isn't it? Because there's a legal reason for that, which is that the, the laws hadn't quite been ironed out yet. And as we said, they hadn't introduced the driving test yet. And even when they did, it was optional if you'd already been driving for a certain amount of time. It was only for new drivers. So the laws couldn't all be enforced, but they could hammer these messages home as a matter of courtesy. I mean, how Mm. 
British is that? <laughs> like it says in the introduction, good manners and consideration for others are as desirable and are as much appreciated on the road as elsewhere. I mean, the tone <laughs> is like Village Parish magazine. Drink driving, smashing into someone and causing their death would be terribly gauche. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. It's a specifically British preoccupation, isn't it? It's like we've got this relatively new phenomenon. And the panic isn't about so much all the people dying. It's like we haven't codified the appropriate set of manners for yeah. it. So like, <laughs> How here, do we know who's being rude? Yes, please learn this guide so we can all start doing it. I mean, even in the first edition of the Highway Code itself, it doesn't even have pictures of road signs in it. It says it's intended to be a guide to the proper use of the highway and as a code of good manners to be observed by all courteous and considerate persons. It's interesting how long it took before that idea of having guidelines to suggest to people what they should do started to be replaced with with actual rules of the sort that we're now familiar with. For example, in 1934, the Road Traffic Act introduced 30 mile per hour speed limit in built up areas, and there were also stronger penalties for reckless driving, and cyclists were required to have rear reflectors. So, you know, you had this gradual replacement of suggestion with regulation, but it really took a long time to get there. Yeah, and a lot of this was done by one person in particular, who was the Transport Minister, Leslie Horbelisher, who was extremely concerned that so many people were dying on the road. He called it mass murder and he mm. looking into it it's, it was really a combination of the fact that a there wasn't really a, a very well observed system of regulations for driving but also that people still weren't used to having so many vehicles on the road and there wasn't there wasn't much pedestrian awareness either so when you look at the code there are actually sections for specifically for motorcyclists for cyclists it's really about everybody understanding you know this is the highway please do not walk onto it and be hit by a car. And one of the things that Belisher did to advance this was he created 9,000 pedestrian crossings with flashing yellow globes atop them that are still called Belisher beacons. They were erected in London in 1934. And I think that tension's never been resolved between pedestrians, cyclists, horse riders, you know, other users of the road and motorists because it, it did eventually become part of the driving test, the highway code. You were tested on your knowledge of it. But it's still the case, 90 years later, that the concerns that they had then, that cyclists and pedestrians might not be aware of what their obligations are on the road, is still a preoccupation of, like, radio phone-ins, isn't it? It's a standard cab driver thing. You know, this, this cyclist cut me up, but he doesn't have to have a licence to be on the road. It's still a problem now. And I feel like in 1931, they could have made everyone buy this thing rather than charging a penny for it. Yeah, and there's a simple reason for a, a lot of the danger on the road as well, which was the lack of traffic lights. If you look at the original highway code, a surprising amount of it is taken up with illustrations of what a policeman might do to signal traffic. Because the, the first modern traffic lights have been installed in 1927 in Prince's Square, Wolverhampton, if you're interested in that kind of thing. But they obviously weren't widespread. If you're point. interested in Wolverhampton, <laughs> it's not the sort of thing I'd usually extend my interest to. We know that there are people in the Midlands. I meant if you were a traffic light aficionado, not if you're a Wolverhampton. Hampton aficionado, which I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure they're out there. But you know, they, so you had policemen who are filling this function. But if you think of anywhere in the country and how many traffic lights you'll encounter there, they obviously didn't have the same number of police officers who were standing in that place. So you know, it was a regular occurrence that you would come up to a junction or a crossing, and there would be absolutely no way of telling who should go. So you had to use your judgment. And that's the other thing about it. In if you in the wording of the code, it's striking how much of it is all about individual judgment rather than yeah. mm. you know, like I took my theory test relatively recently, so I can tell you there's a lot of like millimeters and meters and the, the measurements in there, and in. Instead, yeah. in the original code, you just get It's just like Boris Johnson like, wrote it, isn't it? Just like, yeah, <laughs> use your judgment, I don't know. Yeah. Finger in the air. They, they yeah. talk about leaving ample space between you and the car in front. I'm like, got it. I definitely could have passed very easily if that was, if that was still the theory test. Now, there are some weird rules in the current code, and guys, I'd never want you to incriminate yourself, so I wonder if I could ask you to uh, put your friend's Polly and Rebecca as the uh, <laughs> the cases in point that I'm going to uh, ask you about here. Oh, but no. have your friends Polly and Rebecca ever done any of the following things? Warning others of speed traps. No, but I, I see it happening on my road, which is why I haven't. It makes me angry, <laughs> but I see so it. So that could, that could result in a fine of between 30 and £1,000. Yeah, um, and me waving at you angrily. Thank you. Don't you know <laughs> yeah. people live here with children? <laughs> have you ever splashed a pedestrian? No, but I have been splashed, and I think that that should be the death penalty. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and it could get you uh, three penalty points or if taken to court as much as £5,000 yeah. for that one. There's lots of other weird rules, like you can't leave your parked car unattended with the engine running. You can't sleep in your car after drinking because it counts as being inside your vehicle while well intoxicated. Hold on. Parked car unattended with the engine running. What about in winter when you're demisting the windows and it's on your driveway? Because that is a daily occurrence in this fictional friend of mine's <laughs> life. Sorry, it is. Polly will be interested to know that if it's yeah. on a public road, it's an offence. But if you're in your private, your own private property, it's okay. So you can. What if, I mean, what if Schmolly's fictional house has a part <laughs> of the road that's technically owned by the council, but is only used by him because it no, leads up to his? I driveway. think Schmolly's going to be in some trouble <laughs> on that <laughs> on that front. This is why it doesn't exist. <laughs> Next time. So dad's dead and she's got to dance, okay? Somehow let's get these together, people. The Retrospectors will return on April 19th, 2022. Happy holidays. Part of the ACAST Creator Network.